Before I show you the main board and the main gameplay of Olympus, I just wanted to show you this player board and also uh, this deck of cards. Uh, each person uh, gets the exact same thing. They get a deck of cards and they get this player board. And this player board is uh, all these markers and everything that's on here are in the exact right position for the beginning of the game. Uh, the player board, as you can see, uh, the, has your uh, three priests or workers that you'll start with here. It also has these six tracks that you'll use to uh, show how well your civilization is doing. Uh, the, the six things that they track are culture, uh, population, military, uh, grain, venison, and fish. Up here you can see this is your warehouse and you begin with one of each of the, uh, the resources, uh, fish, grain, and venison. And your warehouse, you can see there's these five jugs here and what that res represents is that your warehouse can at any time only have a maximum of five resources in it. Uh, you can go over it for a little while, but once you hit an upkeep phase uh, during the game, if you have more than five during the upkeep phase, you immediately then uh, have to lose uh, down to that five, so they, they rot or, or you know, they, they you know, get destroyed or what have you. Uh, down here, this is the tribute location. Uh, when your uh, civilization goes to war against the other players, uh, if you win, you are able to claim resources from them as tribute. So if you win some resources, you place them down here. Uh, the reason you don't put them up here is because they don't become immediately available to you, which has both a good and a bad thing to it. Uh, the bad thing is obviously you can't use it to uh, build any improvements or anything like that for your civilization. The good thing is that if somebody then in turn attacks you and goes to war against you, they can't claim these resources. Uh, thematically, um, this is your army uh, bringing these resources back to you, and this would happen in the upkeep phase. So during the upkeep phase, you would then move those resources up to the warehouse. Uh, I just want to go over uh, these different tracks and explain a few things about them. Uh, you'll notice that there's this uh, eight here under culture that has, it's kind of shiny or highlighted, and there's this red six uh, under population, it's the same thing. And you'll notice these two locations, uh, this is a little box with a green eight, and this is a red six. If you are ever able to increase uh, these particular tracks to those numbers, you are then able to add uh, more priests or workers uh, to your civilization. And as with any worker placement game, the uh, more workers that you have, the better. This occurs during the upkeep phase. So it is sometimes possible that um, you'll get that, but you won't gain the benefit of it until you actually the turn ends and you're able to uh, improve those things. Uh, you'll also notice that on these three tracks here, the culture, the population, and the military, there's these little pillars here, like little bars. And uh, what those do is they are uh, something that impedes your progress up these tracks until certain buildings are created and added to your civilization. For example, in culture, you can only go up to four until you build a school, and then you can go up further on the track. That's kind of neat, and it, it, it basically uh, keeps people from you know, just focusing on one of these things and, and, and charging it straight up uh, the ladder. And, uh, it, you know, it makes people plan ahead and, and make, sh make sure that they uh, uh, build the correct uh, uh, buildings and, and improvements that they need if they want their uh, strategies to work. Uh, down here, uh, you'll notice there are no pillars blocking any of these resources. As the resource uh, tracks climb, you'll notice that the number of uh, resources in, like, the boxes increase, um, starting at one here at the bottom and all the way up to four here at the top. What that means is that if you are, like, say here on this track and there's a three grain there, when you produce grain, uh, you will produce uh, three cubes. So, for example, if you are, like, at this location for uh, the, the grain, you're at this location for the venison, and if you're that location for the fish, and if you want to produce resources, you could produce three grain, one venison, or two fish. I really kind of like that. I, I like the fact that um, you have to just be dogged at increasing these tracks to actually start gaining the benefit. You know, you don't just automatically get more once you just, you know, take one little improvement. 
and I, I, I really I really like how uh, the improvement here isn't there isn't an automatic return you know you actually have to invest some time and effort into increasing your resources uh, before we uh, move on I just wanted to point out a couple other things here real quickly uh, you'll notice over here there are these little uh, pictures of cards here and what those represent is uh, these glory cards which are these now there's only six of these and once again there's six tracks the first person to increase uh, their track up to uh, the maximum uh, gains the glory card that uh, is representative for that particular uh, track. So like here's the green one. And you'll notice that uh, you, there's these two victory points over here on the side. So you immediately gain two points and you take this card. Now it's important to notice not only does this get this points, since there's six of these, as soon as four of these are claimed, the game is over. So there is no like set term limit for this game. There, there, is, there is no uh, set uh, period of time before it ends. I mean, it, it can have a variable uh, turns, you know, before the game comes to its conclusion. And I really like that as well. I like, I like the fact that, um, you know, people can actually kind of maybe slow their pace down a little bit up here or people that are in the lead uh, might be pushing, you know, to get that game over with so they can uh, make sure that they, uh, they win when the game comes around. Uh, the last thing I wanted to point out was the population is a very important. Obviously, it's important because if you get to six, you get another uh, priest. But every track that's below population, this does not apply to culture, but every track that's below population, if this track is higher than population uh, when uh, the upkeep phase occurs, it drops down to that level. You can never have your military, your grain, your uh, venison, or your fish higher than the level of your population. And I really like that as well. That means that, you know, some people might just say, well, you know, attack the population, I'm not gonna worry about it, I'll just, uh, I'll focus on everything else, you know, but it doesn't work like that. You know, you need to, you know, maintain this level. And, and, and as the game progresses, uh, you're gonna need a higher military if that's the route you're going to take and everybody needs resources so you're always going to be trying to make sure that your population is maintained and and has a has a a good number to it if you will so you can make sure that uh, you remain competitive in the game well that's the player board i touched on the cards briefly but i'm going to show you those cards uh, in more depth once we look at the big board uh, and why don't we move on to the big board right now